The Idaho Batholith is one of the most important and intriguing geological provinces our lovely state of Idaho has to offer. In today's presentation, we will be taking a closer look at the wonders of the Idaho Batholith, as well as answering a plethora of questions revolving around this geologic province. Such question as, is primary rock types and how they are formed? The primary ages of these rocks? We will also look at the major structural features of the Idaho Batholith, as well as the general geologic history of it. Today we will also be addressing how the present topography of this province is related to the geological history. And finally we will be answering what natural resources and hazards are related to this geologic area of the Idaho Batholith. Let's get started. Before we get started we must first address what the primary rock types are in the Idaho Batholith as well as how they're formed. The primary rock types of the Idaho Batholith are Cretaceous Granite and Granodorite. This Idaho Batholith covers approximately 35,000 square kilometers of central Idaho. It is roughly 320 kilometers long by 120 kilometers wide and 8 kilometers thick. This Cretaceous granite formed when the oceanic crust subducted into the lithosphere until heat, pressure, and slab dewatering initiated melting of the oceanic plate. It is believed that the age of the Idaho Batholith has an interval between 100 million years ago to 45 million years ago. That would be late Triassic period to the Eocene period. However, the dominant interval of emplacement was early to middle Cretaceous. There is a general west to east decrease in age for Plutons of the Batholith we were able to discover the age of the geologic province based on radiometric dates and field relationships. The geological history of the Idaho Batholith formed during the late Cretaceous era nearly 100 million years ago. The Idaho Batholith was caused by the compression of two colliding plates. It started with the dense oceanic Farallon plate being subducted beneath a more buoyant continental North American plate at a rate of 1.7 inches per year. This resulted in the oceanic crust of the Fraun plate coming into contact with the lithosphere of the North American plate. This contact would cause a lot of heat pressure and slab dewatering, resulting in the melting of the oceanic crust. The melting and superheating of rock form magma chambers. These magma chambers would then rise up through the lithosphere caused by the differences in buoyancy. Partial melting of the continental crust would occur when the magma chambers reach the overlying continental crust, forming a melt of granitic composition. Some of these magma chambers would then make it to the surface resulting in volcanoes. The magma chambers that didn't make it to the surface would begin to cool slowly and then stop approximately 4 to 25 kilometers below the surface. This process also included many small magma chambers coming together to form one large magma chamber as it rose up and or cooled. This cooling of the magma caused it to crystallize into granites and granodiorites, resulting in plutons of the Idaho Batholith. Not all the magma chambers cooled at the same rate and timing resulting in many different types of crystalline rocks and textures. The Idaho Batholith also formed such structural features as mountains. This was caused by the rising of magma chambers uplifting the mountains at the surface of the earth. Another structural feature that occurred was thrust faulting in East Idaho. This was caused by the thickening and compression of the crust. The present topography of the Idaho Batholith is considered to be a matured type of topography because the process of exposing the rock formations has been occurring for many millions of years. After the plutons of granite cooled underground between 60 and 100 million years ago, the earth's crust cracked and the land on top of them slid off and exposed the top of the Batholith. As seen in the photo slide, the exposed mountains and canyons we see today are there due to massive erosion and weathering of the original crust. Mining for precious metals is a major natural resource of the Idaho Batholith. 
Early prospectors found gold in stream beds and rivers, but later they realized that gold is associated with rocks that formed in the tectonic collision zone that lies directly under Idaho. As shown in the map, the main fault where many metals and minerals are still found today is the Trans Chalice Fault, which runs directly through the Idaho Batholith and down the center of the state. It is a very unique geologic setting because the fault allowed for the batholith to engulf the sedimentary rocks and the deformation of the two together led to mineralization and formation of those precious metals such as gold and tungsten. The picture slide shows the gold formation intertwined within the piece of granite rock. Water is another natural resource found within the region from the abundance of rivers flowing through the Idaho Batholith. The Payette River, Salmon River, and Loxa River to the north are three of the largest rivers that are located within the Batholith. The Salmon River is by far the most iconic river in Idaho, and it brings in thousands of tourists and recreationalists every year to experience its beautiful landscape and fast-flowing rapids. Extensive faulting, rapid uplift, and the downward cutting of water have shaped the main Salmon Canyon. The main salmon is a younger river, as shown by its V-shaped canyon, steep gradient, and steep tributaries. The Payette River plays more of an energy type role and is far less remote than the Salmon River. Dams play a major role in energy production for places like Cascade and McCall. The picture slide shows the release at Cascade Dam during midsummer. The Idaho Batholith itself is a relatively benign geologic formation, so there aren't any potential hazards associated with the frozen plutons themselves. The activity which formed and shaped the Batholith has all but subsided, but the region is still littered with active fault lines such as the Bear Valley Fault and the Sawtooth Fault. Falling rock and rock slides do occur along roads and highways that have been built and cut through the granite rock and butt right up against the unstable cliff faces and walls. The picture shows a rock slide that buried an entire highway near Banks, Idaho on Highway 55. We understand that this is a lot of information to take in all at once, so we're going to recap a little bit what we've gone over in this presentation so far. Early on in this documentary, we learned how the primary rocks in the Idaho Battle have formed. We also learned what their primary ages were, and how the geologists were able to uncover what the particular age was based upon. After that, Dawson educated us on the major structural features of the Idaho Battle, how they were formed, and its overall geologic history. And finally, Megan educated us on the present topography, natural resources, and hazards associated with the Idaho Battle. We hope you learned something today about the Idaho Batholith that you didn't know before. Our only goal was to spread knowledge and awareness of this truly amazing geological province. We would all like to thank you for coming on this journey with us, and we hope that you have a newfound appreciation for the great geologic province of the Idaho Batholith.